Hi, officer. Anything I can help you with? The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. I think I have time for questions. What are the other ones? Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. Guns are expensive and fragile, I think. Besides, I got kids, can't have guns around them, and sometimes a sharp blade is enough to keep folks at bay. From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. That does not go for real men. It does not go for you. Show her. Show her the wonder. Coach means the expression. Sure. It looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. The traces of her laughter are still there, in her eyes, fading fast. No, I'm afraid not. Tempting to confiscate the blade I used to keep these animals in check. You would put me in an early grave. Is she flirting with you? A little? You think she might be? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Come. To the waves. The sea took him. It was a long time ago. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. She really liked those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bedsick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. Do it! Hit on the widow! It's the right thing to do! Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insulin Indian cuisine. Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. Oh, very. <laughs> Finding pieces of glass, bits of wood. Every once in a while we get dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. What else? 
Bottles, drugs also, lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. Very romantic. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. And go where? The fish are plentiful here, and we get enough orders to get by. It's not great, but it's something. Exactly. I don't mean to complain about my sad, pauper life. We do manage all right. We're tough people here. Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. Hi. Sunny days. You got a problem with that? No, ma'am. We have no quarrel with sunny days. Good. It would have been bad news had it turned out it wasn't a sunny day. Bad news for the skiff. Bad news for the nets. Bad news for the kids. There's a moment's silence. She looks at the rain streaming down the yellow belly of the boat. In time, when the sea turns and the winds settle, she will be ready. Waves wash the sand. A skiff moves across the mirror-smooth sea, far away from here. A lone passenger, a fast sloop in the distance. White sails. Where are you? Hmm. This says by signing, I agree to live in with construction noise. What exactly is the Union building? What a nice idea. Wouldn't have thought that... That Everard and the Union have nice plans for anything. I thought they only cared about themselves. Well, I guess Union members have children too. Aye. Why not? Fine. Here you go. You're welcome. Yes? You stop mid-step and put your hand on the garish necktie. That bottle, Bratan! Just look at that bottle! Oh, I think this is about so much more than cool. Please go talk to him. See what it's about. I'm drawn to it.
The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't you call her? Yeah! Don't you call Abigail! Abigail! Don't... Don't call her! Never thought you'd see such a thing in your life. But this guy's a little too drunk. Don't call Abigail! Hey, Tequila! Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? So what's happening? Yeah, Tequila Sunset. How are the, um, high-concept, reality-based adventures proceeding? Good. These people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. I like this guy. You should too. He respects you by calling you your true name. That's the spirit. I used to shape reality into my image a long time ago. Those days are over now. Sadly, things aren't going that well in Idiot Doom Spiral Land. Haven't found those keys yet, haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. This guy's your buddy buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity of drunks it's you your tequila sunset we've met before don't you remember aha do you want to know how tequila sunset came to be tequila tequila sunset something ominous there mm -hmm. let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday, and by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer. And that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. Does that sound like something you'd do? Yeah. Probably. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. Oh yes you do, Bratushka! The only thing better than that is putting the pedal to the metal after you kiss the tie. And off we go! One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs.
Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will. Followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come! So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come. To which you replied, the time hath come for Tequila Sunset, the end of all things! After which, your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and through the ice. Your hands cramped on the steering lever. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. What else was there to do? Thank you, brothers, for your help in hand. We asked about the whole Tequila Sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Nah, that name sucked. Your tequila sunset. Just embrace it, brother. Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. Please, don't open that door. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Beside your gun and your badge, you said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage, too? That's a big one. You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers, whose main interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Yeah, you said it was no biggie, and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. It's not meant as a joke. He's sorry for the hermit cop. Yeah, you seemed really mad about immigrants for some reason. I'd rather not get into the details. It was pretty low concept. You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. 
You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples, saying, Stupid, stupid, stupid. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? The gleam in his eyes and the slout in his posture is so incredibly familiar. Booze! Did you already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. That very well might be the case, but looking at you, I can say with great confidence that I needed more. You too, Tequila Sunset. Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? So what do you want? I got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. See? There it is, Bratushka! The spirit! Let's buy the spirit! 300 real is a lot, but this has to be done! It's our end game! Exactly! This is no ordinary drink! It's what our relationship has been building towards all these years! This is the climax! The mystery! The virginal sigh! That drink is special! You have to buy it from him! Get it off him! Kill him if you have to! Our ultimate fate depends on it! And the fate of many worlds! The lieutenant looks at you, looking at the bottle of spirits. Then, at Rosemary, suspiciously. See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> He's finding it difficult to focus his watery gaze. What? This guy, this guy. Conversation might bring a discount, no? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. He ain't shitting you! Medicinal spirits are a blast, Bratan! The flaming truth of this joke of a world! I got one of those scientific ampoles a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. It was. In a week, the goddamn kidney started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. The idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead thinking. Swipe three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila. What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Don't say it. 
three real and it's yours, friend. The deal of a lifetime. Well done. You got it. That's a much more reasonable price right there. Makes sense now. Just make sure to enjoy that one, friend. Bratan, I am so proud! Now, whatever you do, don't drink it! This deserves so much more than just regular oral consumption! The tie is so on the money there. Up the bum it goes. Who said anything about putting it up there? No! We're gonna put it into a way more special place! So special! Just hang on to it! Keep it safe! Wait for my sign! Soon. The time will come soon. Have patience, brave one. I'm getting a really dark vibe from this. This won't be pretty. Bottoms up, Captain! In the civilized world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. Tequila Sunset. Wonderful. Not much, but it will do. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Don't call Abigail! Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. A founder slash junior partner at a high-concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high-concept stuff. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. Twenty-two full-time employees, an all-star team, a potentially historical set of individuals. Worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. It helped, truly. With my trusty Sanserique Likra tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircling his irises like stinging brambles. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see? At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. 
the reality situation became very wet, very quickly. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. I wish I were, Tequila. I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see. One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be one of the best. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it. And I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. Me neither, Tequila. When I lost my keys, I lost more than access to my apartment. I also lost my leverage over humanity. I wasn't a high-concept creative director anymore. I was just some homeless asshole with a premium Sanserik Lycra tracksuit. You can't imagine what that does to a man's confidence. Anyway, that was all the story One Bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. Then I can't keep on telling the stories. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Trouble? Say the second thing, Bratan. Shows you got style. Oh, 
of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Maybe they are afraid. Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. Well, if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Here, in a shack. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. Finally, you have those lamos of Martinez off your back, Bratan. This looks like a great place to bring chicks. Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you ask me. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr. Your parents must have had big plans for you. Wonder if you measure them. The question must be prompted by your sloppy posture. Straighten your back, man. Eh? What's this about? Come now, I can't read all this scribble. Tell me what it says. A deal with who? It's the Debardier Union, isn't it? Thought so. So what do the Clare brothers want this time? Huh, I might be half blind, but it looks like part of the village is gonna be a street. The best part, the part we need to get out of our houses. I see Lillian's name is already here. The girl is too trusting. Either way, I won't sign union papers. I've seen it all before. You think they've got our interests at heart? Rich men are always selling poor men promises we never plan to keep. Then the poor get pushed out of their homes and the rich get a little richer. That's the way it goes. So no, I don't trust the fat men, and neither should you. She speaks with the authority of a leader. Hers is the final word around here. She is headstrong, but there's a slight hesitation in there. You may be able to convince her. Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. This is pretty much a known place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. Here? For you? No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. 
Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes? No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. This used to be such a nice church. She's not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run down bunch of houses, empty. Of note, the old fish market up on the boardwalk, but it's closed. What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Lensen. Used to be a supply depot. We think sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement. But just so you know, after we are done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you?
Waves crash onto the beach, drowning the reeds. Far to the south, a congregation gathers to a soup kitchen in a shelter for the homeless. An old woman gives out knitted scarves for free. This could have been you. This could still be you. A down-on-his-luck nobody trying to survive. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it, adorned with the expression. Mister? She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Bye!
drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps, just silence. Chemically sweetened, across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened the hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavy with money, but only slightly. Number 312D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. Tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Hmm, correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez sense. Grim affairs. Meaning, 
This is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Nothing for us to do here. Let's move along. of reeds over there. It's a great place to hide something. Kind of out of the way, being so close to the water. We don't have a reason to. Yet. Nothing. Just a hunch. The hunch passes, leaving you there, by the old boy bobbing in the water. Time to go. Sir? Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Oh, uh, I didn't mean it in any scientific way. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great, great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. My mug? W why would you think that?
How do you mean? Forgive me, officer, but we've only just met. He's trying not to look afraid, because that would be incriminating. Yet, he is. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here we go. Start pumping that sweet info. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Officer, please, let me explain. It's not like that. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug. Admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. How? But why were you in my apartment, officer? So you work for Everard Claire? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. Of course, of course. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. 
has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vane has turned. He cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Seol. I meant no offense, truly. Oh, yes, of course he is. I was just speaking about his connections. Let's change the subject, okay? <laughs>